Hello, welcome to our session today. It's delivering a watershed-based public-private partnership for shared goals. My name is Brad Jodal Redlin. I'm the program manager of the Minnesota Agricultural Water Quality Certification Program, housed at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Uh, I'm joined today by our presenters, Daniel Isaacson of Minnesota Department of Agriculture as well, and Christy Purcell from the Cannon River Watershed Partnership. We wanna to talk to you today about the Cannon River Agriculture Collaborative and the great work we're pursuing in that partnership. Let's turn it over to Christine and hear about it right now. Thank you, Brad. Thank you to Maud for having us present today. So um, we're gonna talk specifics and then um, Danielle will talk more broadly about the certification program. But um, as my part in the Cannon River Agricultural Collaborative, we are a group of public, private and nonprofit partners. We formed uh, about a year and a half ago officially and we had our kickoff event uh, just over a year ago in 2019. We all came together under a shared goal, which is that we want farmers to implement practices that improve the farm's profitability, regenerate the soil and is good for water quality. So we have partners across the spectrum of public, private, and nonprofit entities um, that all want that. So um, I have the website there for the Cannon River Agricultural Collaborative, or affectionately known as CRAC. I've got that uh, website down at the bottom, cannonriveragcollaborative.org, if you'd like to learn more information down the road. These are our current partners in the collaborative. Um, so you see my organization, Cannon River Watershed Partnership, we're a nonprofit. The other two nonprofits in our group is Great River Greening and Environmental Initiative. Environmental Initiative um, was one of the, the very first organizations to help convene groups like this. And I'll be going more into that role that they had um, at, at the early stages for sure. We have, of course, some public entities, the University of Minnesota Extension. We've got the Soil and Water Conservation Districts. Because we're in greater Minnesota, we don't have uh, watershed districts um, per se. There are a couple um, in Dakota County, but the larger Cannon River watershed, um, the SWCDs are our closest partners as far as working with uh, landowners and farmers. So those are our really crucial partners. And then we have our private entities. Um, True Terra Insights Engine developed by Lando Lakes to really get the acre by acre data on the field and using that to see about compliance. And um, the CFS, the soil agronomists and that relationship that they have with the farmers. Um, the, the third private entity that are, is in the collaborative is Compure Financial. Of course, we wanna make sure that lenders are aware that actually these soil health practices is a great investment and we don't want lenders to, to shy away from that or be nervous about that. And of course, probably our most important public partner as well is the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. And we use the Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification Program as a way to measure our success, as a way to um, incentivize people uh, farmers and landowners to participate. And I'll go more into details about uh, CRAC itself and how we got here, but I'm gonna pass it to Danielle to talk more broadly about the water, Ag Water Quality Certification Program. Wonderful, well, thank you so much, Christy, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I'll just start off by saying this uh, collaborative really has been a powerful partnership for the water quality certification program. And uh, we are just delighted to be a partner and a tool for the collaboration to really implement conservation practices in the watershed. And so the Minnesota Agricultural Water Quality Certification Program is unique to Minnesota. It's a voluntary opportunity for producers and agricultural landowners to implement conservation practices really aimed at protecting our water resources. And we approach certification with a whole farm planning and kind of site specific solutions. 
The program's operated by the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, but the partnership we have with our other state agencies and federal agencies is really key here. Um, so Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, the Pollution Control Agency, and the Board of Water and Soil Resources, along with all of Minnesota's soil and water conservation districts, and then USDA NRCS and EPA as well. Um, and so through these public state partnerships, um, the program offers certified producers the, a really unique benefit, um, which is regulatory certainty. And so um, producers have a 10 year contract with the state once they're water quality certified. And during this time, um, they are deemed to be in compliance with any new state water quality rules or laws. Um, so in addition to that certainty, which is again, kind of a, a key kind of unique piece of this program, we also offer recognition um, to those producers who are really, you know, going above and beyond to protect water quality. And um, we have signs that each producer gets to post at their, um, at their farm, and in addition to some other recognition opportunities. We also offer financial and technical assistance, financial assistance, including um, an RCPP award with NRCS and $5,000 supplemental grants from the Department of Agriculture. Um, there's also a branding and marketing opportunity for those who are interested to use that logo on their products. And it's really kind of a checkup and validation for growers to work with a conservation professional to go field by field, acre by acre, to look at their operation and um, opportunities for improvements. And so um, the certification process starts off with a really thorough risk assessment, as I just mentioned, looking at every field, every crop, including physical site inspection. Um, and really determining those baseline conditions. And so the certification specialist will work one-on-one -on -one with the producer and they'll look at um, physical field properties, nutrient management, tillage management, pest management. We look at irrigation and drainage and any existing conservation practices. And so again, it's a, a really, really close look at the operation. And then as risks are identified through this process, the certification specialist will work with the producer to find conservation or management practices that really address that water quality risk, but are also the best fit for the operation too. It's really not a prescriptive process in that way. And so here you just see a list of some of those various practices that producers implement in order to get their water quality certification. Um, one of the most popular ones often being cover crops. And then just, um, I wanted to share kind of an update on sort of our numbers of where the certification program is at. So to date, um, and again, we're at 966 certified producers, 676,000 certified acres. The numbers will be even higher um, by the time this recording is out. And so we, we see um, these numbers change on a weekly and daily, even daily basis sometimes. We also keep track of those new practices that are implemented for certification. Um, in addition to using the Bowser Pollution um, Reduction Estimator um, to look at soil and sediment and phosphorus reductions, we're also keeping track of um, our emissions reductions through for greenhouse gas and so using some estimates in, um, developed by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. We have we calculate that um, as of early November here, we're at 38,000 CO2 equivalent tons reduced per year um, by those new practices that are implemented through this program. Um, and endorsements are another um, kind of new, new feature that we've added. It's an additional recognition opportunity for certified producers who really go above and beyond certification in different areas. And so um, we look at, we have three out so far right now for soil health, integrated pest management and wildlife. And so again, these are certified producers who um, are really seeing kind of some of those co-benefits of certification and going above and beyond in these area. So we have just over, getting close to 60, just over 50 um, endorsements out there as well. 
And then lastly here, I just wanted to touch on partnerships, which is really a key part of the certification program. And in addition to the public partnerships that I mentioned at the outset, we have some really great projects and partnerships in the, with the private and nonprofit sectors. And again, with the certification program um, really serving as a role and a vehicle for kind of that baseline risk assessment, customizable conservation delivery, and really kind of accounting of new practices. We're also sort of this infrastructure that's set and deployable and have kind of those local level relationships um, with SWCDs and agriculture. And so um, kind of as this ready to go tool, um, we've plugged in with a few, few partnerships that I, I don't certainly don't have them all highlighted here for you, but um, one being the Ecosystem Services Market Consortium, which is a pilot project that just launched in Minnesota that'll be testing and streamlining the creation of um, and sale of environmental credits from farmland. We're also a member of Field to Market, which is a national organization that focuses on sustainable supply chains. And we have a couple active projects with them. Embold is another example, which is a coalition that's really focused on um, the future of food and ag that was launched by Greater MSP, which is a regional economic development partnership. Um, and members include Cargill, General Mills, Target, another private sector um, partner that we have. We've had a longstanding partnership with Land Lakes and Truterra here. Um, and the new collaboration that's really connecting our water quality assessment tool with their Truterra Insights Engine tool. And then lastly, I'll just point out our um, regional partnerships. And so we're a member of the Cedar River Watershed Partnership, which includes these partners listed here, Mauer SWCD, Hormel, Truterra, Central Farm Services and Environmental Initiative. Um, working together to improve water quality for the Cedar River. And this um, regional partnership was ultimately a model for the Cannon River Agricultural Collaborative where we have um, a similar diverse group of partners working together to improve water quality in the watershed. And so with that, I think Christy, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Danielle. So yes, indeed, the the uh, Cannon River Watershed Partnership, the organization of which I am the executive director, we have been around for 30 years. In 2020, we celebrated our 30th birthday and we have had a watershed based approach to water quality in southeastern Minnesota for all of that time. We are a nonprofit, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. And so although we have done and continue to do uh, farm research and uh, sampling and other things um, along the way, what we've really, I would, I would argue traffic most heavily in is in relationships. So because we have this longstanding organization for three decades in our area, um, we do have a lot of connections and relationships with public entities, with individuals, etc. So when we, the, how the Cannon River Agricultural Collaborative began is because we, we heard about what was going on in the Cedar, our, the watershed neighbor just to the south of us, the Austin area. And uh, my colleague, Alan Kraus and I asked if we could attend one of those meetings of which we did. And um, they were about, they're about a year ahead of us, I would say, as far as the timeline of their group getting together. Um, they uh, had, had pioneered this under the wing of Environmental Initiative. So Environmental Initiative is based in Minneapolis. They are an environmental nonprofit as well, and they really do convening and facilitation. And they thought uh, our watershed might be a great place to try a second iteration of this type of regional partnership. So um, the, the thing that's unique about the canon is that there was an entity already in existence in CRWP. So really for the first year for sure, and even before we were officially together, we partnered very closely with Environmental Initiative trying to learn from the, the missteps and successes of the first group in the CEDAR. And that really provided a model for us, um, for our work going forward. And 
I would say the the backbone of of this is that this whole collaboration is that we've got the ag water quality certification program so that we can get we can get data we can um, find different ways to um, sort of triangulate the relationships with the growers you know who has a relationship with this person who is the best person to follow up with the phone call oh I see this person at the grocery store or wherever um, and and so what we found for the collaborative is really important is not only the relationships with the growers but the relationships amongst all of the partners that I showed in my earlier slide so all of us getting to spend time together getting to know each other getting to know what the work is that other people do has really been crucial to our um, successes so far um, the canon is currently um, going through a one watershed one plan planning process actually that just wrapped up so there is a joint powers board that has been created with the same geography as the cannon river watershed um, they have a little extra uh, piece of land in this lower vermilion so this is the watershed and we looked at what the tier one priorities were coming out of their um, comprehensive watershed management plan was and we really saw an opportunity to focus in these uh, these three of their top top tier watershed priorities so Medford Creek Rush Creek and Prairie Creek um, so these two are in Steele County so really working with the Steele SWCD as our key partner for the most part here, some into Rice County, and then Prairie Creek is largely in Rice County. So trying to contact those growers. And because we do have relationships on the ground and because we do know the landscape, we really needed to tailor our engagement and our approach just a little bit differently in all of those areas. Um, so you can see in Medford Creek, um, double certifications each year and wanting to start with at least five certified farms. Rush Creek, similar goals there, double the certifications. And Prairie Creek to certify a minimum of four producers each year. You can see Prairie Creek is much larger than that. So we're able to do that because we know about how many acres and how many landowners. Um, so we're able to use the water, ag water quality certification program as a way to on the land, get these improvements made that we know actually do impact water quality. So the idea um, that we had in, in bringing our project to this conference is that um, just an update with where we're at. And I really hope that um, just as we had the idea from the Cedar River Watershed Partnership, and we adapted that and made some changes and alterations for our watershed, um, I hope that there might be groups here who could do the same with what with the, the format and the structure that we currently have and learn from our mistakes and learn from our successes and be able to duplicate this all over the state would be pretty fantastic. Um, I think as we look ahead to that, I really see our role um, I, I see our role, I guess twofold. So one is, locally working with the partners, continuing to deepen the relationship amongst all the different organizations that are currently in the partnership or in the, in the collaborative, perhaps other groups will feel like they want to get on board. We all bring very different things. And so continue to deepen those relationships, deepen the relationships with the farmers in our watershed and the landowners to help them do the right thing and see reap the benefit, see the reward for the, the things they're already doing. But I also see us as a potential resource for other groups around the state. So um, if in your watershed district or your area, you're thinking about something like this, I would be so happy to have a conversation with you to just at least tell you how it works in our neck of the woods. It's going to be different everywhere, but I think that's part of what the strength of this type of model can be is that it can and should be adapted to whichever place around the state um, is, is willing and interested to, to make it work. And all of the partnerships that we have developed over time um, have really helped that to, to be successful here in the canon in our 
just in our first year and a half or so. So that is what we have for our presentation. We will be available to take some questions after this video shows. And thank you again for having us and thanks for attending our session.